Welcome to the Talk It Out Show. I am your host, Joanne. We would like to let you know that this show is for entertainment purposes only. Now, if you want to look us up on Facebook or Twitter, look us up on Talk It Out Show. If you want to email us any of your questions, go ahead and email us at talkitoutshow at gmail.com. Now, if you need to physically send any of your questions to us, you can send it to our P.O. Box at P.O. Box 901043, Portland, Oregon, 97290. All right. As you know, we have our panel, but today it is just Lydia and Joanne. It's the take of the show. Yeah. All that's right. right. You know, we Lauren and Valerie are out doing their thing, and we just hope them and that, that that they stay safe out there with, during this time. So we want to help somebody out today, you guys. And so here we go. This one says, hopefully you and your followers can give me some advice. This is my husband and I have been married for four years and we've been together for almost 15. I am 30 years old and he is almost 32. We've basically grown up together and made a lot of mistakes along the way. We now have a two and a half year old son as well. Shortly after giving birth to my son in 2017, my postpartum depression was bad and my marriage was strained. I got in contact with a guy I knew from college, let's call him, let's just say his name is Kevin, and we began texting on a pretty regular basis. After about four to five months of this, only texting and FaceTiming, my husband read some text messages between me and my best friend, mentioning Kevin, and things blew up. We decided to work things out for the sake of my son and even tried counseling. It didn't last long. Eventually, we just swept everything under the rug, moved on. What happened? It just disappeared all of a sudden. I don't know what happened. It just literally disappeared. Okay, that was really weird. It just went away. Okay, anyway, so yes, and. We just swept everything under the rug and moved on like we usually do. My issue is we are now at two years later and he tells me that I can't see my friends anymore because they are hoes and he doesn't want his wife around hoes. I'm grown and made my own decisions and my friends had nothing to do with it. He has pretty much given me an ultimatum of choosing between being friends with them or being married to him. Honestly, the only reason I've gone along with the BS for this song is because I can't handle the thought of divorcing and having to share custody of my son. What should I do? Did I make my bed and now I have to lie in it? Or is he just being unreasonable? Okay, well, <clears throat> to end that silence, <laughs> I guess I will say you did make your bed. And you should lie in it because if it was the other way around, you would want him. You probably would feel the same way towards him. But because it's you, you feel like it isn't. I don't think anybody should have a controlling issue over anybody. Really, I don't. And so it's like those things, like, I said that, but I really don't mean it. <laughs> like, I said what I said in the beginning, and I don't mean it. Okay, this is me. This is what I mean. He's going to have to grow up and grow some big draws. That's just what it is. Yes, you made a mistake. You did it. It ain't got nothing to do with your friends. Even if your friends are like, girl, you need to get you a man. You still a grown woman to make your own decisions, to choose who you want to choose, and that's it. And he got to understand, excuse me, he got to understand that's nobody's um, fault but yours. And you just going to have to break it down that that's what it is. And if he wants to leave, then he's just going to have to leave. But... You're not going to choose one or the other. You're not going to be like, well, I can't get kicked with my friends or I got to sneak behind my man's back to kick with my friends. You're a grown woman, period. You really are. And I mean, you put the doubt in his head. You gave him that where he is now the way he is. And that's on you. And like I tell a man who's cheating on a woman or thought about cheating on a woman, you have to make it up to him. You have to try to make him feel secure in the relationship you guys have because you destroyed what he already had you as. And now that you destroy that relationship, you're losing your mind. So to me, if he's not feeling secure and he's now two years later from the incident, am I right? Two years later from the incident? Mm -hmm. Two years later from the incident and now saying he don't want you to hang out with your friend means he... 
um, you never made him feel secure and understand, and he could never forgive you because you didn't you didn't make it an effort for him to know that he could trust you. Now, two, your girlfriend's coming over talking about they fling and this and this and this might trigger that moment because now he's like, well, they're talking about it. You might be jealous and be like, I want to be able to be single too. So that probably was the cause of it. Not that they're out there just really hoeing around, just like they're single. And they're dating and chilling and kid, and sometimes you do. You be like, "Dang, I want to live vicariously through you." Mm-hmm. You know, da, da, da. I understand. I'm married. I used to want to live vicariously through my friends. Well, that ended because, honey, they these this the way they date Nisa. You don't even want to try it. I don't care. Mm-hmm. They be having good sex. Crazy people that come with it. Who want a crazy person with good sex? Not Litia. So I'm just going to say that right there. I'd have put a T in that name, not a D and T, because I wanted you to understand it was not me. But that is what I believe. And I think you didn't do your job to make sure and make him feel secure. And you should not be talking like that around your man, especially after you did your dirt. And even though it wasn't really like dirt, dirt, you did your dirt. Did they do anything? That was just a phone call. Right? He, text message. No, he just saw a text message that she had sent to her friends. About Kevin? Yes. That's all it was. It was about, it was about a conversation that they had. But she was talking to Kevin, right? Yeah, well, she was talking, yeah. But okay. no, she was, it was, that day, it was after the fact, but he seen a conversation that she was having with her, one of her friends yeah. texting or whatever about a conversation she had with him. Okay, so that means you had an inappropriate conversation with Kevin. You might not have said that, but that... He ain't going to get mad talking about, yeah, Kevin tried to talk to me. I had to put him down. Your man ain't going to get mad about that. So I'm just going to say that's what it was. So let you get that conversation in your head. Mm. Correct? Correct. Mm. So that's where we're going with that. Mm. So I don't know. What do you think? I just, I don't know. I, I, I really, really, I just believe it's not that cut and dry. Now, I, I get, maybe it's because I've seen so much worse. Maybe because we see so many Things where people have actually acted on things and done stuff and whatever. And I think, you know, a lot of times because if you look at the situation, the relationship was strained. There's some things going on. And sometimes, you know, I think that's the hard part about it. You know, some people are in relationships, especially if you're going through something. You may, I mean, unless, unfortunately, it's, a, it's a, this guy. This is, a, this is a guy that, but this is a guy that you knew before. So she's probably talking to him for a sounding board or whatever because of what's going on in the marriage. He's, she knew him, you know, in college or whatever, but... I don't think a man's going to get mad over a sounding board. I don't think a man's going to get mad so it depends. if you're talking to... Because my thing is, if you're talking to a dude, mm-hmm. I mean, you're talking to a dude, mm-hmm. regardless, and you're telling your friends about the conversation, it wasn't, oh, he was just helping me with my situation because I, I just needed a man's point of view because my husband was tripping... No, that, that wasn't the conversation. Mm. For him to flip out, that couldn't have been the conversation. You know what I mean? I mean, like, there had to be something that made him mad. That now you guys need marriage counsel and all that other stuff that didn't work. Mm. No, it had to be more than that. I don't believe it was um, like she making it sound all simple and dry. She didn't want to tell us what the conversation was about. But you could tell... For him to flip out, it'd be something else. Because I know plenty of married people, and not because I'm married. I know plenty of married people, and I know unless he's just already been a jealous guy, which was not stated. Okay, either. so this is kind of different. Okay, so now I'm thinking about this. So now that I'm actually looking at and in the timeline of it. Okay, so she was talking to the guy Kevin, right? Mm-hmm. So what made her husband mad was she he read a, t- a text message. Just between her and her friends mentioning the guy, right? They didn't go to to counseling until after that when he got mad about that. So they went to counseling and like I said it didn't work or whatever. So but then after that they just swept everything under the rug. So they never dealt with the situation. Yeah. So basically hence for he was like two years later and now he's all of a sudden saying this. And so now I get the point of what you're saying in the sense of Within those two years, she probably didn't make him feel that he could trust her, or he didn't or deal with whatever his issues was. And now it's like, okay, you can't hang out with your friends because your friends are doing this, da 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 da. They're hoes, such such. And a lot of times, which I is this frustrating? I I don't know because I've been there. I know how it is. We are our own people. We are our own person. 
And I, that irritates my soul when somebody sits there and thinks, okay, just because your friend is this way or they act in this way. Or, I it heard really your isn't friend. that. It really is. That's just an excuse because I'd rather take it out on your friend than I read, than take it out on you because I love you. You're mine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that thing where two people are cheating, but you mad at the girl instead of the guy. Yeah. And the guy is the one that owes you the respect. Right. That's how it is. He mad at the friend. Even though it's her. I don't believe he... I think he just... She had to make him feel comfortable. And you know when we have our girl chat. I just sometimes think about our girl chat. Just even with us. Like, we have girl chat and we be talking. I hear myself. And if my husband was not secure in me, he probably would just be the same thing. Because I am like, yes, girl. So was that big? Oh, girl, did he do that? So my mouth is going, nah, I'm not going to take that. See, if a man can't lay it down and yeah. here, my mouth is always the one running. Yeah. Now, if I made it where my husband yeah. can't trust me, yeah. for me not to have my mouth running like that, you can't be around your friends. You yeah. need to be one of those people that holier than now and you yeah. would never talk. You could only hang out with the pastor's wife. <laughs> Mother so-and-so Because your mouth won't talk like that So I don't actually And that's why I said she didn't make him for security Because I don't believe it's towards a friend It's just that you get in that conversation And sometimes We thinking that the husband can't hear something You'd be like oh I wish my man did that Oh I just wish he Oh well my man don't do that And then you go back to she was talking to her friends about that Kevin did. Mm -hmm. So it's just everything goes around that the, situation. Well, I guess it's, at the end of the day, it's just a trust issue. It is a trust it's issue, trust and like issue. I said, I I, and I get it. it, but it's just like I guess for me, it's like there's been she never acted on it. And you know, what I mean, other than well, other than they're talking. He doesn't know. No, so she's talking. She like she said, she talked. There's no proof said. that he, she never acted on it. Well, yeah, and and because they swept it under the rug, and you have to understand how you read that. Is they didn't really talk about it, then they went to marriage counseling, and then they swept it under the rug. So we have not really went anywhere to understand right. any further. Like, did they? Did they? Were they talking nasty? Because just because you didn't have physical yeah. reactions yeah. with each other, you know, there's some conversations, oh, yeah. some pictures that could be shown. Because she, well, he could have read what. Girl, his thing is big. Mm, uh -huh. I ain't never seen one big like that. Mm. Well, you know that already messes with a man's yeah, ego. Yeah. So you know that it, we don't know what the conversation because she made sure not to go into details mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna be. Y'all know she didn't make it sure to go into details on that conversation because, like I said, she wrong. And yes, he's wrong for saying that. But I think right now he just he needs to heal. Yeah. And you and and he doesn't know any other way to heal but to say you need to stay away from them. Yeah. And because they're not in a good relationship, she probably kicking in with her single friends all the time, or her married friends that's cheating because he's saying they hoes. So they yeah, either sleeping yeah. with a whole bunch of people, or the married ones is cheating, or something's going on. Because I remember I, we have a, a a mutual person that we know um, back in the day, and this way back in the day. She was cheating on her husband, and he almost, like, blamed all of us. Like, we was a part of it. We had no clue because we wouldn't have stood for all that mess. And so he, when they got a divorce, he, he kind of divorced us, too. A man don't want to talk about another, uh, talk to another man about their woman going out on them like that. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you stupid for staying with him, and I think that's what it is. I, and as I said, it's really hard. You see, you see my first question. Mm -hmm. My first answer was, <laughs> you need to listen to him. My second one was, it, like, you don't have control over nobody like that. Right. But at the same time, if I'm not making my man feel secure, because I know my mouth. You guys have seen my mouth, but it can get way worse than what you guys have seen or listened to on this radio. Mm -hmm. I'm way calmer here <laughs> than right. I am in the real world. And I, I guarantee you, if I stepped out on my husband... Not even like seeing, just talking and flirting with another dude. I guarantee I couldn't have those conversations anymore, mm -hmm. right? Because that's gonna always be something on the back of his mind. So then I have to tone myself down mm -hmm. until I can get him back to being comfortable. But we're not making him comfortable. We just swept it under the rug, mm -hmm. under the rug, and let it be, let it go. And I can tell you, 
that's the worst thing to do. And even if allowing him to sweep it under the rug is wrong on your part. Because you need to actually explain why you did it, what was the purpose, this is what's going on, had nothing to do with nobody else, this is what it is. Even if it has something to do with him and it hurts his feelings, he needs to hear that. And that's what marriage counseling was for. For you to say, it's my fault that I was talking and flirting, sexting another dude, but I felt like you didn't care or I, what I did wasn't important to you anymore or or I was just stupid. I just wanted to see what another guy would be like to flirt with me. When I got it, I was done. I didn't want it no more. I just, that's what I wanted. Well, I mean, you, I mean, and, and see that to me, I think if that to me sounds better. If you're real, if you come real like that, and but we just don't real, feel like that, we think the worst. Like, oh, if I say this, he's gonna leave me. I say that she's gonna leave me. If I say this, because the same way she's supposed to do that, he needs to say, "You hurt me to the core." Yeah. Like, I don't know if I can trust you anymore. You hurt me mm -hmm. because I was so secure that I would never have that. Mm -hmm. And if you could have just, if anything was wrong, you didn't like anything about our relationship, mm -hmm. I wish you would have came to me. He needs to talk too. And I mean, and either I, way it goes, the communication goes both ways. They up way. together. You know what I'm saying? Like, they grew up together. They, you and know, that they might be a thing. Them. She might not have nobody else. Right, that's what I'm saying. She's and that's that. You're and I'm not, not trying to make excuses. Yeah, Lord yeah. knows, I'm not trying no, to make excuses. No, yeah. I'm just saying sometimes that curiosity, we try to kill that cat. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, <laughs> but it doesn't work. Together, like you know, for 15 years, that's a long time. Like, she and was I don't 15 think years, she want to be with him. Like she was, it, but because if you say you never know, because of the fact that oh, that's pretty much, pretty much probably all she ever knew. Yeah, and she doesn't know anything else, and. Like you said, things probably make her curious. You know, they end up staying together. They end up having a kid together, mm -hmm. and so it's like, I don't okay. think she even wants to be with the guy anymore. Period. The only reason is that she don't want to do the custody thing, which I yeah, think is selfish that. anyway. That's just mm -hmm. a selfish thing. But my thing is, and I say this, and I go around, and um, Lauren will fight me on this to death. But life is life, and that's what it is. You have to always keep your marriage spiced up and everything. And if you felt like you were getting the short end of the stick, then you should have jumped out there and explored and with your husband. Mm. You should have made the effort to not talk to another guy, but say, okay, you know what? We're going to have date night. I'm going to be Tatiana, mm. and you mm. going to be... Cuvio, Suvio, a suave name. Come up with a name. Who cares? And, uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. And then you go and do that. And then he comes, and then you guys go to a freaky nasty hotel and oh. tear it up. Oh. That's what you should have did. But you should never go outside your marriage right. and whatever explore and let him know. You know what, baby? We haven't went out at all. And I heard to a survival of date, uh, to be a married is we still need to be dating each other. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have to do it every week because we're busy or whatever. But once a, once a month, let's have the most fabulous thing, date night. Matter we're going to put a savings account just for a date night because cool. it might be exclusive. We might just want to jump on a plane and go somewhere for 24 hours and then come back. Whatever you want to do, but make it exciting because no matter what that you guys grew up younger, you can have more fun and more excitement with your husband and your wife than you can with anybody else. Because mm -hmm. the grass always, always look greener over there. Honey, that grass, if you uh, get the sprinkler on that mm -hmm. grass, it's brown, dirty. Matter of fact, there ain't even no grass. Mm. Somebody just laid that down there. It wasn't even no grass. That ain't, even, that ain't even true grass. <laughs> Somebody came in there and rolled some grass out there and said, ta -da, and it looked like just green. But when you work hard and make sure you seed your grass mm -hmm. and water your grass on the right time and daily, you get this beautiful green grass, then you know you did something. And that's what your marriage is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you keep going over there for that fake one where all the dirt and crud and the, and the brown stuff is under there, but they done weeded out and put this fake one on there. Mm -hmm. The fake is going to go back to brown because nobody's taking care of it and caring for it. So keep that in mind. So mm -hmm. what you're doing... What you did was wrong, so now is your time to make it up. And if you need to tell your girls, you know what, I'm going to be spending some time with my husband for a couple of months. I'm going to leave you guys to be such and such and such. I wouldn't tell my husband I want us to be friends like you. I probably already did. 
I, I wouldn't have said that. I would have said, you know what? I'm I'm going to work on my marriage. I messed mm-hmm. it up. I'm going to work on my marriage right now. And I would tell my husband, I'm going to work on my marriage with you. I'm not going to leave my friends alone. Mm-hmm. But right now, I told them they're going to have to give us three months, six months. I might text them once in the blue. But because I still need my girl time, but I'm focused on us. And these are the things that we want to do. I want you to write in a bucket. We're going to put a bucket. But you can tell my kids love, hate my bucket. But this is a positive <laughs> bucket because I do a torture job. I mean, Chris, come up with some torture. We'll talk about that another time. But anyway, <laughs> you guys come up with things you guys want to do and how you, what you guys want to talk about. So, yeah, question box and um, date night box. And put whatever, I don't care how crazy it is. Even if one of you guys, and I don't agree with this, but even if one of you guys decide you want to do a threesome, put that in there. And then, you know, you fake a threesome. You put a wig on, <laughs> and you, you Sheila, you take the wig right. off, and you tie your yeah. See, threesome. Yeah, there you go. You know, that's Get how you creative do. with it. Yeah, bring out Sex a vibrator, a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> a vibrator, a toy, you know, whatever. GG, so whatever for the man, or whatever. Right. You know, you get the bouncy ball, whatever. I don't care. She it, seems to know quite a bit about this. <laughs> she just kept on naming so I can hear all that. But, <laughs> you know, so you put that oh, over in this God. box. And then your question box is like when you guys have late night snacks together and you pull out a question. And you never know what the question is. And it could be a serious question. It could be a fun question. It could it could be a question that ends into sex. It could be it, whatever. It's a question box. Mm-hmm. So whatever you ever wanted to ask each other that you felt uh, uh, scared to, you put it. And this is called no judgment box. Mm-hmm. And then you have those conversations and you work those things out. Mm-hmm. And I bet I I guarantee you'll be better. And you work on your relationship and start getting. Um, I have this one book. I have it somewhere. It's called an aphrodisiac book. Get you an aphrodisiac book and make you like late night snacks that's aphrodisiac. So it tells you how to make these certain kind of hot wings. Oh, it yeah. tells you how to make a certain kind of, you know, your strawberries, not just dipping in strawberries and you just have a bunch of strawberries dipped in so-and-so and then a cream and then oil and then it's aphrodisiac. Um, I know everybody goes, why do you always go to sex? Because usually sex is what causes an issue in a relationship. It really does. Even though it's not the major thing, but sex does release a lot of tension and it releases a lot of issues that we don't think of. So, no, it's not the major thing in there. But if you lack their sex, you start fantasizing about good sex. If you can please yourself better than your mate can, then you definitely are going crazy mm. and we have had so many questions mm. about that where women is not getting satisfied and you best believe women you are not the only ones not getting satisfied there are men right. out there that are not getting satisfied and there are mm. men that are getting tired of always being the one to start it right you might need to get up and, and wake up and give mm. him some fellatio mm. i'm see how i learned probably thank you i'm so because you, you know i was gonna say that thing that yeah. But you, um, you know, something that he's not used to, to shock the mess out of him. Those are things that it's okay. Wake up and, you know, have frosting or chocolate syrup on their nipples and, and learn a trick on how to oh, suck no, a guy's no. nipple or whatever. I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> Rub his thighs and make his thing arise. And then, you know, say, meet me over here at the such and such. And he'd be like, we have the Yum. such and such. And he'll see a word that says... In Hawaii, and all you got is these uh, these fake pine trees over there, and you give them some over there under the pine tree. Conversation went to the left. Conversation. I'm helping. I'm healing some souls right now. (laughs) Healing some souls. It went to the left. I'm sorry. I just just kept going. I just kept on going. I do. I I, I get so fast. Kept on going on. on. I believe it was. She's trying to make some up. Something like her. She's trying to get the ideas for herself. She gonna be like, oh no, I do later. these things. I bet I best she, I believe. She gonna be using the later to best believe I do these things, yeah. honey. I bet best believe. Okay, okay. You got to. And communication, and that's what the other jar is for, is communication. Well, that's my concern too, because I'm thinking if they swept everything up under the rug, I'm pretty sure that's pretty much um strained right now. That the the sexual And that's why you have strange. a moment like you could do it every night. Mm-hmm. Which I would do if you're trying to mend the relationship because he has tons of questions. And then you might have tons of questions. Like, he you over here, why you looked at this other man? And you might be over here, why don't you give me a massage that doesn't end up in sex? You know? Yeah. You, you never know what the question is, but it's a non-judgment 
question yeah. and you can't get mad. You have to answer it, not being in your feelings, not being mad, not getting angry at the person. Just answer the question. And when you hear the answer, you can't get mad. You can't judge. And that has to be an agreement. So sometimes you guys might, like, I don't want to do the question today because I, um, I had a bad day and I don't think. It will work out today. To, and to, you probably wouldn't be able to give it your all over that. Yeah, and just, because know, that takes a lot of work to hear somebody say something negative about you, and or and it might not even be negative, yeah. but it, it feels negative. It feels yeah. harsh. It feels attack, and they can't do it when they had such a bad day at work. Right. So remember that is a and, and throughout the box, it should say no judgment. Mm-hmm. Can't get angry. Mm-hmm. Gotta support love. Respect, can't bring it up later. Yeah. Can't bring it up later, da, 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 you mm-hmm. know, and all that. And you can always put the same question back in the box. But we'll come back to that because I'm not finished with that question. Okay. Because once that night's over, it's done. Mm-hmm. So then you might have to put the question back in it, and it's okay. I hate when people say, no, you throw it away, and the question is gone. No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. It might need to go back in the box. Or I might need to rephrase that question. You are always allowed to put questions in that box. Mm-hmm. Just all I say is every time you use that box, shake it up. Mm-hmm. Because that question might come... You probably want the question to come the next time you do it, but it might not come for another two or three weeks. And then mm-hmm. you'll have a different mindset when you hear the question. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, time will change. And the way you answer it and the way the person accepts it. But that, that is what that box is for. And then you have your date night box. So you have that. You can have as many boxes you want. Create, Be creative. Mm-hmm. All means. Mm-hmm. You know, you can say, okay, this is date night. This is sex night box. This is question box. This is hatred box. This is mm-hmm. things I want change box. Mm-hmm. You can have a lot of different boxes. It's your world. And understand one thing, and I tell this to everybody. Your marriage is your marriage. You can do whatever you want in your marriage. Nobody has to agree with it at all Mm -hmm. for your marriage to work. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you want to. And stop the little fantasy. Women, stop the little fantasy back in the day where we think Cinderella Mm -hmm. and Prince Charmer and and Snow White and all that Mm -hmm. is a real. Because they never show you marriage. They just show you getting to the marriage. And they they say happily ever after the LMT. It it, it don't be happily ever after. And it can be. (laughs) That's not true. It is a happily ever after. Mm -hmm. But it's not the way you fantasize yeah. from watching those shows. Mm-hmm. It happily ever after. It happily ever after because you worked your butt off. Mm-hmm. And when you made it to uh, one year, you did good. When you made it to five years, mm-hmm. 10 years, mm-hmm. 15 years, 20 years, that's when you look at it. Mm-hmm. I went, um, I had a friend who told me that her, I'm going to change the whole scenario, her, her best friend and her husband, her best friend's husband, didn't have a successful marriage because she didn't like the way the uh, wife was bullying the husband and whatever. And I was like, and how long have they been married? Uh, like 27 years. It's a successful marriage. <laughs> you don't have to like the way. If she is fine, whatever got nothing to do with you. Well, she done turned um, him from God. Mm-hmm. It's still, their marriage. It's hard to make it past five years, yeah, yeah. 10 years, and you telling me she's 27, mm-hmm. it's successful. It doesn't mean that they're still not going to have struggles and issues. It doesn't mean they're not going to have mm-hmm. their fights. and stuff. There's no marriage in the world that's perfect. Mm-hmm. And if you get that out your mind, that you're not going to have fights and all that, there's going to be a part of my life where I'm never going to have fights. Well, you're sadly mistaken. It's unrealistic. So that, that bothers me because mm-hmm. when I see I don't care who it is. Mm-hmm. They make it 30, 40, 50, shoot, 20, I don't care, 10. I'm happy for them. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you done did it. You made it a year? Shut mm-hmm. up. Because mm-hmm. a year is hard. You know, after six months, you're looking at the person like, I'm tired of picking up after you. Mm-hmm. It could be either way. I, I don't want to cook up to get no more. I don't, you do it. You know, you. there's a lot of getting to know. You put two households together, men and into one, and it, it's going to be a battle. Mm-hmm. So anytime somebody makes it successful, that is, they made it another year as successful. And like, and like Lydia said, saying, and I, and I want everybody to understand this too, in relationships, it's not always, you guys are not going to be, it's not always that 50-50. People always be saying that, no. Yeah. It's not that way. Some days, somebody may just give 1% and then the other person gives it 0.5. You know, right. <laughs> you know, you just don't, you know, it's just that way, but. If there's communication and if you guys sit there and talk to each other, that's why, that's why I guess what's bothering me about this relationship because 
I really feel that if, if they really work at it, they could it could be saved. If, if they have they have a long relationship, yes, it's always good. People don't understand it's good to be friends with who you're with, and people don't understand that. And I'm like, this relationship is worth saving. It's, it's, it doesn't mean like to me like kind of what we were talking about the other day, and how you always say. You know, if we don't, if we, if we've only been with that person, there's nobody else to compare them to. Mm-hmm. Work with w- who you're with. And that's what you, you've been blessed to be with this person and to be able to love this person all those years and grow up and learn that person. You guys move together. And these are just obstacles in life. That we, yeah, I think back in the day that people was getting married at 15 and, you know, younger ages and they had yeah. to work it out. We, that's all we know. I don't know it's about. You know, grandparents been together 65 years and stuff like that. Because they got married younger and they just had to deal with it. They had to work those things out. Yes. They're not perfect relationships. And I think for me, I had got discouraged years ago because I would see these marriages and people would always be like, oh, I've been together for this, 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 this long time. And I was like, well, I always felt like people would put this facade up like, because it's like, okay, well, you guys act like, oh, because you've been married this long time. Like, you ain't went through nothing. And I just always like a type person. Just be real. Say, hey, you know what? We ain't perfect. We done been through some stuff. That's what's keeping you guys together. That's what you guys, you guys went through the weather, the storms, and you guys are together. Be real so you can give somebody else some strength. Don't sit there and act like, oh, this is this is great marriage. No, y'all been through some stuff. That's why y'all still together. And show the, that. that, that. The re- Sometimes people don't do that. Is And it took me a while to have that understanding, too, because I agree with you on that so much. But when people go, it was great, It was. it's because they're not... They don't want to relive the harshness. They don't want to. But they oh, yeah. are, in their mind is like we've been through it. We mm-hmm. made it. We got a great marriage. Because mm-hmm. in their in their mind, I they didn't see. I didn't. No, it's yeah. not that. Mm-hmm. I didn't see us making it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm just saying, I yeah. got a great marriage. Now you sit down and say, did you have any struggles? They might. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, it wasn't easy. Yeah. Oh no, I'm gonna tell you right now. Don't run into. Yeah. But you have to ask those questions. If they just up there bragging about their marriage. Let them brag. They happen. That doesn't mean they ain't being real. They've been through some stuff and they like, shoot, yeah, we got a good <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, and I, and I, and I and I agree with that, but I also don't want people to have this false, you know, thing, like, like kind of like you said, the Cinderella thing. Yeah. Because it's not like that. You're going to go through things and to let you know that this will pass. It can pass. You know, it can, with time and healing and you guys actually sit down and communicating, it can pass and you guys can get through this. So but that's why I think people should do like you're you got kids, right? Yeah. I always say you got the try five quest. Mm-hmm. You just have tons of kids, right? Mm-hmm. I have tons of kids and I don't have tons of kids of mine, but mm-hmm. I have everybody else's kids. Mm-hmm. One thing I've always said is I let them see everything. Mm-hmm. And we so busy don't letting our kids see everything mm-hmm. that that's all they had to compare is mm-hmm. Cinderella, Snow White and all that. Cause you know how you see like some shows, um, you'll go the kid is saying, Mom, you were weak to stay with Daddy, and he did this and this and this. And then she's like, no, I, I actually was strong because it's I strong. don't did it. But b- because they don't have nothing to compare. Because right. when people, and nobody's going to go, and because I get what you're saying, but nobody's going to go walking around and say, we've been through hell. A lot of people who know the couple that have mm. been together for that many years mm. know they've been through hell. Mm. Know some of the fights. Some people, and it might not be everybody. You might have to get 20 people to understand that yeah. they've been through some hell together, but they mm. know it. Mm. But we need to be having these relationships in front of our kids mm-hmm. so they can understand. Like, I'll have certain fights mm-hmm. with my husband in front of my kids. Mm-hmm. Only certain. When it's like real deep stuff, yeah. they know we arguing because mm-hmm. they know. Yeah. And I don't I don't hide the fact. Yeah. You might not get to hear the argument, but yeah. you know we argue. Right. And then, but I also show the love. Like, mm-hmm. I'm a love. I flirt with my husband in front of my kids. Mm-hmm. I'll smack his behind in front mm-hmm. of my kids. You know, mm-hmm. I have his back even when I think he's wrong and mm-hmm. then go off and tell him he need to fix it. Mm-hmm. And then he got to go over there and fix it. Mm-hmm. But if they use their mind, when they get older, they were like, oh, mom must have talked to him. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, that conversation, mom must have talked to him because mm-hmm. he was so adamant on that. Mm-hmm. And vice versa, the conversation. But you need to have those so the kids don't have mm-hmm. those issues. Go ahead. Sorry. Mm-hmm. I just also, wanna, I just no, that's back. fine. I'm thinking, too. About what you just said earlier too, which I do is a very important is the um, and not just like it's not just have to be sexual, but and this is something that I'm learning that you know having the date night or where you can get away, you know because a lot of times life can get in just you know like I said you have a kid you guys have a kid stuff like that but 
Well, I can get in the way. You got, I mean, people will understand. This is cracking me up, you guys. You know, we know and it's quarantine and stuff. I tripped out because I finally seen something. I guess this is a well-known man. I'm, I don't know if he's a well-known pastor or whatever. His quarantine made him have to sit down and look at his wife all the time. And he was some famous pastor that was traveling all the time. So he never was home. So now we have this quarantine and he actually got to sit and look at this woman. Like he ain't, he ain't never really been having to. Because he's like, I'm traveling, I'm hopping on a plane and I'm going here and there. And I'm, and this has been his life for a long time. Boom, shut down. You got to stay in the house and look at this person. It's like, it forced him to have to really get to know her. And sometimes that can be a scary thing. Because you oh, could yeah. just go, go, go live your life. And you're just, okay, I'm just yeah, providing for my apart family. without even realizing You're not, and you don't even know who you're with. That's what I'm saying. So a lot of times, if you're forced to sit down and actually get to know the person, and I mean, like, we, you, you guys could have been together. Oh, yeah, you've been together 15 years. But like you said, she went to college. She did all this stuff. You guys were not around each other all the time. You guys weren't, you know. So you guys may not really know, know each other. And also, too, because we change as we grow. And you guys have been together for a long time, so you guys can change. You guys seem like you guys were friends, and so it's this is something I think that you guys should be able to talk through. It's a lot of through. communication, is what yeah, and and, that's, and a lot of times we don't we run from that. To me, I think like yeah, but then people are scared of the reaction that they have in their head that's gonna that you're going to have that's, that's going to happen, happen. Yes. or the response. Yes. They already envision. So if I go ooh. I need to talk to Joanne. Joanne, I do not like you wearing those headscarves. Mm. How are you going to react? Now I'm more scared of how she's going to react. Mm. So it's making me not say it. And mm. so communication then gets mm. slushed back. Mm. And that is the biggest cause of divorce. Mm. And that is the biggest cause of any relationship ending. Right. Is the whole point of communication. Mm. So you have to have a communication. And when communication, the word communication comes out, it's not just somebody talking. It's also yeah. Can you listen, listen and you hear listen and respond so and respond on the question? Mm. Like my kids do it all the time. I'm talking about this and they'll go somewhere. I, I didn't, I didn't bring that up. Right. So why is that? No, I'm just saying no. So that's irrelevant like to this conversation. So it they is. Don't, they don't want to. It is. To and they get that from adults. Yeah. I don't know what adult they get it from because over here, <laughs> we are very, like, I stay on the point yeah, the, all, the, the whole time. time. <laughs> I'm not, and I don't know anybody in my family mm-hmm. that's go off the point. So mm-hmm. where they get it, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But they try to do that to mm-hmm. get you off being mad at mm-hmm. them. And sometimes it gets they get away with it because I just don't feel like arguing with these dang kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because then, you know, I want to go to the next level. Uh, <laughs> you're grounded. Right. And then, you know, there's going to be some flying words mm-hmm. flying out that's not appropriate. So I just think of stuff like that. But communication is very much the key to any relationship. And I think that's where you guys are having issues at. Mm-hmm. And that is why you guys haven't been. Because, like I said, if you swept this under the rug, right. let's think of how many other things you swept under because the rug. Because it's not, I mean, not saying that's not a big deal, but it is a big deal, but it. To me, it's it needs to be taken care of before it can get worse. Like we've had so many really bad it's already questions. Worse. You know, I mean, like they 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 didn't even take like this. This can be salvaged because there she didn't act act. Let's say maybe act act on it like in the sense like you know. But she, men look at it as if she did. So yeah, it doesn't matter. And, and, and I mean, for like, a woman's point of view, yeah. yeah, we like oh she didn't do anything. Yeah. But a man's point of view is yeah, yeah, yeah you I get it. Yeah, I get it. And I mean, I get that, but I'm saying that also too can be saved. And then like she just been out there, like we then had questions where people just been out there sleeping with everybody because it's like. But it depends on her attitude. We don't know. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Is. This is your job, yeah. Missy, mm. to go in there and fix it. It's your job. Mm. It's your position to go in there and fix it. It mm. is not anybody else's position to do that. Mm. You have to. It's not even his position. You have to go fix it. And like you said, it, you know, she got to see if it's even worth it. She might be just done. It's worth it because you said I do. Yeah. That's what it's worth. It's worth it because of that. It's but to have a hold for sick, better or worse, or sick as hell, and that. all that. All that's in there. So if this is your work, this is go back from when I said a long time ago, mm-hmm. don't jump out the boat early because it ain't, it's going to be you know someone also, too, I will have to say this. And I, and, and I just, it's just me because I know how this is. Sometimes... And I can say, make him do like everything what he's saying. I'm not saying she's not right. But also, too, I don't like when someone controls somebody too much where you, where you just like, you can't talk to somebody this and that. Because to me, that becomes this narcissistic behavior to where I'm controlling this person and this and but that. But that's and the then, thing. He's not thinking like that. 
But I'm saying, but so, I get what you're saying, but he's not she, thinking she, she, I she's not doing people. anything. No, I, I'm going to tell you right now, your man cheat on you, and somebody says, I don't want you to be controlling the situation. No, it ain't controlling. Mm-hmm. He done messed up my trust. It ain't mm-hmm. got nothing to do with controlling. Mm-hmm. It ain't got nothing to do with it. So if I say I don't want him to be out on my, or kicking it with his friends anymore, that's what I want because he messed it up. I was fine before then. Once you should be able to talk to people. But that's the thing. It, so everything else that I get what you're saying is null and void mm-hmm. until she does what she needs to do to try to fix the situation, salvage the situation. Because we're two years she had plenty of time to salvage it, mm-hmm. and she didn't. So then he just said, forget it. It doesn't look like it's getting any better. I don't want you around, around your friends. That's what that conversation is. So my thing is, she needs to salvage it. She needs to fix it. You messed up. You need to fix it. Because if it was uh, the shoe was on the other foot, oh, you would have everybody having your back to say, oh, no, he didn't. Oh, no, he need to fix that. Or he, yeah, you can leave him. No, that's what I'm saying. No. Just like I would want a man to jump in and fix the situation, I want her to get in there and fix the situation. And if she would have did it earlier, the conversation about friends would have never came up. And like I said, you need to put your friends on hold. Your marriage is more important than your friends. You made a a vow to God, to your family, to your friends, that this is who you're going to work it out with. And you messed up, so now you need to go and jump in there and fix the situation. Not him. You need to fix it. Because somewhere in there, you didn't fix it, and now he that's all he can think about. And he's trying. He's been trying to sweep it under the rug to not think about it, but he keeps coming back. Because you know why he keeps coming back? Say he keeps bringing it back to him. He keeps bringing it back. Because ain't nobody fix it. Nobody ain't nobody there. You didn't put a Band-Aid over it. You didn't put the newer spawn on the sword and put a Band-Aid over it. All you did is try to let it heal naturally, and it didn't work. So you better now get the new spawn win. <laughs> And now put the band-aid, clean it every day, mm-hmm. and work on the relationship. Because for him not to say anything to you and tell you two years later he don't want you around your friend, there's something you going about life like it's the same. You have a conversation with your girls like it's the same. You doing whatever you want to do, and you ain't trying to build that relationship. And now all you're doing is he thinking he all that. And what, you, what are your girlfriends saying? Yeah, he do. I don't know what's wrong with him. I don't even know how you deal with him because I wouldn't deal with him. No. And then now he likes saying, I don't want you around your friends. Duh. Because you need to get some friends that are going to sit there and say, you wrong. So now you got one. Lydia saying, you wrong. Get your butt up and do your thing. And matter of fact, I'm like him. Stay away from your dang friends until you get your relationship. And stop telling these no good for nothing females that's just only having your back. To uh uh-uh, uh, nope. And you don't tell them nothing. You tell somebody who's going to look at both sides. And even if you're wrong, they're going to be like, you need to work it out here and there. But right now, you got all these people sitting up here siding with you. Nope. I'm not. You made your bed, lie in it, deal with it, work it out, and fix it. You don't like the way you feel, then fix the situation. Well, yeah, I guess he's right because you just said, I'll make my. <laughs> she said, you made your bed, lie in so I guess you were going to make her. Yeah, exactly. Lie. Oh, I that, that irritates me. No, no. Mm-mm. I'm just hoping oh, no. that. I guess my concern was that while she's going through this, it, it, trying to fix it, that she has a, a sounding board for herself as well. I'm not just saying, oh, like, be like that she just be for her or whatever. Her but, sounding board is with her girls. Well, and then, then he, that's why he said he don't want you around them. Think about it. Two years later, he's saying, I don't want you around your friend. What do you think it is? Girl, he wrong. I don't know why you did when you need to leave him alone. He ain't he ain't no good. He ain't no you can do better than that. I got a friend, his name is Charles. You can be with him. Cause Charles will treat you like I well, man. I mean, think about it. He didn't say the time it happened. He didn't say when you went to marriage guy. He said it two years after all that. You know the friends ain't saying nothing good. They ain't telling her she wrong. And they probably can't tell her she wrong because of one fact simple fact. They only hear her side of the story. And none yeah. of them got brains to go, well, what, what is he doing what besides that? Yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't have to say that. So, you know what? You know, that is true. I mean, but it, it, and at the end of the day, you have to do what you need to do. You got to look at it and think, okay, if this is worth it. And like she said, it is, you married him, so it's worth it. You know, you guys have a family. It's worth doing the effort, taking the effort to do whatever you need to do to make it right. But commun- at the end of the day, communication is way, that's the, that's the way, that's the key. That's what y'all need to do. The sweeping it under the rug is not going to work. That's not going to, because it's not, I mean, you sweep it under the rug and then two years later it's still festering. Believe you me, that stuff hanging around for over and over and over, all these years does not work. And you could be sitting there in this relationship 
for years and just you know, both of y'all just unhappy and y'all ain't even addressing the situation. Deal with it. Take the time to be with each other. Talk. Deal with this the whole situation so you there's going to be some healing going on and you guys can decide what you need to do in your relationship because what you guys are doing now is not working. That 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 ignoring stuff is not gonna work. And and Lydia's right. You know about what he's talking to your friends and they and everything you're doing. So we hope that you have we helped you guys out and focus, learn to love yourself and love each other. And thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you next time.